Okay, workshop for art startups. You are an art startup if you just started your business, have sold less than 5,000 or so of art combined offline and online in the last year, or you're just struggling to get traction. I, I said in my post, guys, whether you've sold less than 10 pieces, I'm just, don't, don't get hung up on any of these things here. It's basically, if, you, if you've really just gotten started out and you're struggling to get traction and uh, uh, you, know, you, you haven't sold that much in the last year, then you're, you're basically like, you're still just starting out. So this will apply to you. I know there's a lot of other people that are on here too that wanted to join that, that are a little bit past this stage perhaps. So I may say something that, uh, that you know, uh, applies to them but mainly this is gonna be for people that are in this stage. We will probably do something else for people at uh, other stages after this. So let's get started. Okay, the principles. Uh, you are a startup business, all right? And I say that in quotes because I often hear people say, you know, they, you think of yourself as an artist or a photographer or maybe a starving artist. It's a term that really bothers me. I won't go into that, but I wanna make the point that that the same, the same principles that apply to startup companies apply to you, all right? So when starting out, your only goal is to get traction somewhere, anywhere, all right? And you don't get to tell the market what it wants. The market is gonna decide what it wants and you have to listen to it very closely. And what I mean by that is, you might go out you know, with your subject matter and you might try to sell it, and you might be like, oh gosh, I really hope that this content you know, works. I really want to sell this. And, uh, and then you find out that, that the market actually wants something else. The market does not care about what you want. It's, it's unfortunate, it's sad, but it is what it is. The market decide, decides what it wants and you just really have to listen to it. And uh, when I work with a lot of you, I'm going to be deconstructing as much as I can about where you're having any traction at all so we can figure out where that is and try to uh, pour some gasoline on it. So it's not a time to be picky when you're in the startup phase about what you're willing to do or not willing to do. Sometimes I talk to people and they're like, well, I'm not going to do shows. I'm just not going to do them. And I sit here and, I, and I'm scratching my head and I'm going, oh my gosh, have you ever ran a startup company? Well, obviously, no, you haven't. But if you've ever been in, a, in the startup world, if you've ever been in that position, you realize that you cannot be picky about what you're willing to do or not willing to do. You have to do everything. Now, here's an important point, because a lot of people think about it, they go, I, don't, I just don't wanna be in the business of you know, lugging myself around to shows all year long or doing X, Y, or Z. It doesn't matter what it is, but they might be picky about something. And, and what I say back is, that doesn't matter. You, you can, you, if you do a couple shows to figure out your business, you can hire somebody to do those shows for you. Okay, you can hire an intern at a local college, you know, for $10 an hour or $12 an hour to do that show for you. But you might get more sales in that one day and more qualified leads than you did in the last year, you know? And so you have to decide whether you wanna do it or not. But you're, at this stage as a startup, you're not committing to anything yet. You're not making a commitment for the next 10 years to do any one particular thing, right? You're just literally trying to figure out where you can get traction and where you can get feedback and, and figure out what the next steps are. So the next thing is to look for an advantage or an arbitrage, right? An example of this is if you live in Austin, Texas, then, you know, if you are, a, let's say you're a photographer in Austin, Texas, or you're a painter in Austin, Texas, you have a, your local advantage is that you know the imagery, you know the times of day, the lights, the angles, you know, you know what the secret spots are. You, you, you have an advantage by living here that every other photographer in the, or artist in the country does not have. I'm giving that as one example, but look for an advantage or an arbitrage always. It's going to make the world smaller for you. You just need to get your product in front of the right people, okay? And generate qualified leads, the number one metric, and make sales, right? In order to generate qualified leads, you have to just generate leads. So again, if I give the example of, of uh, getting out in person and doing some shows or going to a farmer's market or whatever it is to get out in person, you're, you're obviously hoping to make sales. You want to make sales, number one, but you have to collect leads. You're going to collect somewhere between 20, 30, 
sometimes more times the, uh, the amount of leads than you will sales. It's kind of crazy. If you do five to 10 sales at a show, you might get 100 emails, 100 leads from that show. And of that, 70 to 80% of them might actually be qualified. And why that's so important is you got to fill up your sales funnel, right? You, you, you guys are all operating a real business with a sales funnel. You put the leads through the top and some sales come out the bottom. The, pro, the, the reason that lead generation is so important for every business is because nobody is just ready to buy right on the spot. That applies to almost any company. Like, remember Art Storefronts, I'm going to guess that at some point we got your email address before you became a member and you subscribed to our blog, right? Or you subscribed to our podcast. That's lead generation. And then eventually you put in a demo request. Like it takes a lot of time, right? So it all starts out with beginning the relationship on the simplest level. And then maybe sometime down the road, if it's a good fit, you might buy. So you have to make sure that you're generating qualified leads, okay? Now, if you are, if you are doing something and you make a few sales and you're generating some leads, you're starting to get traction. That's, that's a really, really good thing. That's what you're looking for. So never forget the importance of collecting leads everywhere. This is one of the biggest mistakes I have found. It's a pattern. Um, I've, I've actually just recorded a separate video on this because it's really kind of blown my mind. But with all the different um, photographers and artists that we're advising here and talking to, I have noticed that whether it's on their website with the lead capture tool or whether it's at art shows or whether it's anywhere in person, people are not thinking about collecting leads. This is a very important business principle. Everyone's making this mistake or 90% of the people are making this mistake. What I mean is they might be making sales at a co-op gallery, but they're not collecting leads there, even though they can. They're, they're making sales at art shows, but they're not collecting leads. So you're just, you're leaving so much on the table and you're not giving yourself the building blocks to grow. Okay, so the digital approach to, to uh, generating qualified leads and starting to get traction. Um, so when you're starting from scratch, trying to find traction digitally can work, but just know it usually takes much longer than getting out in person. All right, be ready for the long haul. So I'm speaking to those of you who are literally just starting out and uh, you're hoping that you can just sit behind a computer and you know, uh, turn a few knobs and do a few things and you're gonna learn all the lessons about your niche, you're gonna learn all the lessons about the demographics of your customer and you're gonna learn everything and you're gonna be able to scale it and just, you know, the sky's the limit. That is going to take a long time and be very hard. You will learn more by getting out in person in one day than you've pro if you've been at this for a bit, you will learn more than you probably have in a year of sitting behind your computer. There's just something to it. Now, why do I say this? This is just a principle in startups, in building startup companies, right? You get out in person, you talk to people, you ask them questions. Hey, why did you like this image? Where, you know, what, 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 why do you connect with the subject matter? Why do you like it? You observe people as they come to your booth without even saying anything sometimes. And you notice that people are just going towards one piece of content or one style of content. That's, that's the market telling you that something is resonating. And so when you're also at this point, when you're starting out, you want to have a very aggressive mentality, guys. And I'm saying, i.e., do a ton of creative giveaways. The giveaways, as you know, are a great way of generating leads. And some people have asked me, like, well, they generate a lot of vanity leads too, you know, like not qualified leads. And I said, yes, but if they, if, if they generate 10 qualified leads and let's say 90, you know, general leads, I want to ask you, how many qualified leads did you get last week, right? And, and what was the ROI on this giveaway for what you got for it? So what matters is the fact that you got the 10 qualified leads, not the 90. And I'm just coming up with those numbers out of the blue. That, I'm not saying that those are, those are accurate. I think they're actually much higher. Um, but don't worry about making huge profits at this point, guys. This is all a marketing expense. Normally, it costs money to acquire leads and customers. If you can break even or make a little profit early on and your list is growing, you are actually winning. Okay, so this is an important point. So when you're doing giveaways or you're, you're doing that type of stuff and it's really early, of course you don't wanna be losing money, right? You wanna make a little bit of money, but I just wanna make this point because acquiring customers usually costs money. And so you take your giveaway and you, you, and you divide it by the number of leads that you generated and that's your cost per lead, right? So like 
or, or a cost per sale if you divide it by the number of customers. That's your customer acquisition cost, otherwise known as CAC, okay? But when you are early on, you wanna be just really aggressive. Like be aggressive with price, be aggressive with the giveaway. Don't hold back, you're just trying to get traction, okay? You're not trying to build and scale the business yet. So you have a serious advantage that you should use, and I just wanna make sure you guys are aware of this. Your cost on a print is so little, yet you can give it away with a big price tag. Um, or if you're a painter and you have originals stacked up in your garage or somewhere, use those. They are huge leverage. Like if you have an original painting that you normally would charge a thousand or $1,500 for, and these things are collecting dust for years, give away one of those. Because if you do a giveaway for a thousand dollar piece, Think about how much more attention that's gonna get and, and the people that's gonna attract, okay? Now, when I talk about the prints for the rest of you that are giving away prints, you're, like, you can buy a, uh, a paper print. I think there's a huge advantage on like fine art paper prints. Um, your cost is so low and you can mark them up so high and like you, you can get creative with how you do that, but it costs you so little that you can get, you could do some really big ones um, and just kind of get crazy with it. Like maybe you have a big one that's framed and you know, it costs you, you know, $80, but you've got a, now got a price tag. That's like, this is a $750 piece I'm giving away or a thousand dollar piece. And it gives you that much more leverage on your giveaway. So utilize your advantages. And I believe that the prints, even if you do them in person, even if you you have some sort of uh, a way of doing a two for one or whatever it is, just realize that you can leverage that and you always want to leverage the things that you have advantages with. The goal here is just to get your art, your name, your product in, in front of as many pe people as possible. And a point here I wanna make is doing a bunch of SEO website work at right here at this time is absolutely the wrong move. You don't know what sells yet, you may need to pivot your business model or your entire website strategy. And that's aside from the fact that in 2020, SEO is gonna provide an extremely low ROI, return on investment, on your time if you get any return at all. Uh, that is a, a subject for a whole nother discussion. SEO is search engine optimization for those of you who don't know. So the digital approach alone may not work for you and your content if you're just starting out, okay? If it doesn't work or you lose your patience, get out in person. It's the most important point I can make. Don't just sit there and, and do social media posts and follow the art marketing calendar and go, it's not working for me. It's not working for me. If you don't have traction and you didn't come in with traction already, you got to do something else. Uh, you, and, and the fastest way is to get out in person, but you got to do something else. You got to try some other methods and we'll get into that too. So the in-person approach, when you're starting from scratch, doing things in person is far easier because of how quickly you can get your product in front of people and you can do it today or this weekend. Now, when I say this, guys, your actual product, there's such a big difference between people seeing your prints in person, like in real life, and the power of that, versus like you just posting it online, right? And oftentimes, as you guys know, most of the time you guys have been posting images of your work and not holding a print or doing a video of the print, you know, close up side views and things like that. So it's, and, and you definitely wanna be doing that because you need to merchandise the product as much as possible so these people know what they're gonna buy and how cool it is. But when you're in person, it's just so much, everybody grasps it right on the spot. And so instantly, as people are walking by, you have leads walking in front of your booth. You've got prospects walking in front of your booth or wherever you're at. And the people that come in, you can actually get them to become leads and they actually see your product, which is amazing. And you can observe them and all of those types of things. So even though it seems like a lot more work to do shows, I, sh I assure you it is not if you calculate the ROI, the return on investment, again, on your time spent, right? So the amount of time that you're spending behind the computer, wasting months and months and months of time potentially, if you, you could get out in one day and probably do a show and sell 500 to $1,000, you, you, know, you do that four times in a month, you're at $4,000 in sales just like that. And now you have the seeds from which to grow your digital business. So there's no faster way to make sales in person than in person, build a qualified lead list, ask questions and get real feedback and find your niche. Learn to love it. This alone will be a massive advantage. And I'll get into that too. 
If you think you have a niche problem, just get out in person as much as possible and let the market tell you what it wants. You can only solve a niche problem by talking to customers or observing their behavior. Like if 50% or more of your sales come from one specific subject matter. So test everything and run tests often and quickly when you are in this position, all right? I want you guys to try everything that you can um, to generate leads and to get traction. Generate every idea you can, both online and offline, and test them all. Your goal is to get your product in front of people, see if you can gener generate qualified leads or sales. Don't spend a lot of money or time on any one specific thing. No overthinking, no big purchases or commitments, no perfectionist mentality. For example, I was speaking to a photographer and he said, well, I wasn't just ready to go spend $10,000 and have a booth yet. And I said, no, 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 no. You do not go spend $10,000 and get a booth. You go buy a table at Costco for $75 or wherever you can get one used, drape a skirt over it or whatever, get, a, some, get some prints made of what you think your best sellers are, or what your friends and family tell you your best sellers are, and get out in person. But do not make any big purchases or commitments. Just get out there and just do it kind of raw and dirty, all right? Um, we all want the easiest thing to work, right? Usually, usually the easiest thing to do that everyone can do and is doing will not work or will, or it will have a low ROI, right? So what I'm, what I mean here is that sometimes people, you know, they start their business and then they, they had this idea in their mind. They were romanticizing about it like SEO. Like I'm just going to launch this site. I'm just going to do some search engine optimization work and that's it. Right. And they get really hung up on it. And when it doesn't work, they get really emotionally beat down. And so when it doesn't work, don't get upset about it. All right, move on and try something else. You got to try other things. Getting emotionally invested in any single tactic is a sure path to misery. And many people will actually just give up because they think they failed. But in reality, this is just normal startup business. This is just the way that it goes. You got to try things. You don't know what's going to work. And what works is going to be different for everyone. And when you find something that works, in other words, you have done something that is generating qualified leads and sales, that's when you focus on it and you double down. I need you guys to appreciate how hard it is to get traction in any startup business from any single marketing channel. And don't allow yourself to get distracted from it, okay? Ask yourself instead, have you fully exploited this channel that is working yet before you deviate and move on to anything else, okay? And in this process, if you can't get traction, you may very well decide to change your subject matter. This is called a pivot in the startup business, okay? And there's nothing wrong with it. Some of our most successful members actually pivoted. Meg Knappenberger, uh, William K. Stidham, two people that, that are uh, some of the biggest sellers on our platform, they both pivoted. So don't feel bad about that either. You may have to pivot. You may not want to, but you may have to pivot and choose a different subject matter where you have an advantage and where you have a, a really solid market. That's, what you, that's, where, that's where you end up if things don't work, right? If you just can't get traction with the subject matter you currently have, that's the last step. You try something else and you fix the problems, right? You, obviously your other content didn't work because there wasn't a market for it and you had no advantage or whatever it was. Now's your chance to pick something that actually works. So I'm giving you guys this example. This is a, this is a brewery, a, one of these ranch brewery properties in Austin, Texas called Treaty Oak Distillery. Um, and it's, it's like probably, I'd say about 20 minutes or so from downtown. It's a beautiful spot. And uh, I was there with my family about three weekends ago, three or four weekends ago. And I took a picture of this. This is my picture, all right? At this place, this brewery distillery had about 500 people there during the day all families, great people, great crowd, you know, uh, definitely like a middle class and up type of a crowd. And there were these booths here, right? So I took a picture of it. And the thing that, that drove me crazy here is that you can see this guy was selling a book. This guy was selling like birdhouses. I think this was jewelry. And my wife spent $200 here. These people had, had, had uh, patrons going by their booths all day long because people go to this ranch and they hang out and they kind of spend, you know, three, four or five hours there with other families and friends and things like that. And there's a ton of these in Austin right now. But the, 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 the thing that stood out to me is we're in Austin, Texas. This is not a small city. Why didn't a single artist or photographer have a booth here? I mean, it just blows my mind. 
there are opportunities here all over the place and they're just being completely overlooked. And I believe, and this was going back to one of the points I was making earlier that I said I would, I would come back to is that if you actually get out there, guys, you're going to have a massive advantage. If you actually get out there, these people are out there hustling, right? And there's not a single competitor uh, that's an artist or a photographer. You could have been the only one. You could have got your eyeballs in front of 500 people at least that day and probably made some sales, had a great time doing it, talking to people, and, and probably got 100 qualified leads on your list. And so I want to encourage you guys to be thinking about this because it's, it's not that hard and you can do this too. These people aren't any more talented than you. They are just getting out there and hustling, all right? Do what the other people are not willing to do and you will have very little competition. Everybody asks me, you know, hey, there's so many photo landscape photographers on Fine Art America and, and all these places. Yes, there are. Stay away from those places. Everywhere where the competition is extremely high, yes, you are right. It is hard to differentiate yourself. So go everywhere else but there. That's where you're going to have the advantage, where you will be the only person in front of 500 people every single weekend. Okay, and these places are all over the place. There's farmers markets in every city, in every neighboring city. There are breweries and properties like this. There are upscale hotels. All of these places are opportunities, okay? While other people are sitting behind a computer waiting for the world to come to them, these people that I just showed you are out there making real sales, talking to real customers, moving their businesses forward, okay? Art shows, local festivals, farmers markets, breweries, wineries, upscale hotels, office buildings, Parks, office parks, food truck roundups, wherever. There's tons of places where this stuff is going on every single weekend. You can do it too. You just got to find them and hustle. There's digital ways to do this too, although they're not as effective as I mentioned. It's not, it's not as easy when you're not in person, but things like Facebook groups and Instagram influencers. By Instagram influencers, I mean finding people uh, that have a large following on Instagram that might be able to share your work or share your giveaway right? When you're running a giveaway and if they have qualified people, if you believe qualified people are following them, then those people might just turn into qualified leads for you. And you can do this by, you know, giving them an offer. Maybe you pay them $50 or $75. I've heard, uh, uh, Meg Knappenberger told me in a recent phone call that she paid an Instagram influencer and ended up selling like five limited editions from it. So the opportunities are there again. What's going to work for you is going to be different for other people, but these are all things that you can do right away to start generating more qualified leads. Next, you guys, I want you to get the help you need to keep moving forward. I do not want you guys stuck, all right? All small businesses, especially startups, hit roadblocks. The only thing that is certain is that you are going to get stuck somewhere. Something is not going to work at some point. This is for every startup in every industry. It always happens, okay? We built art storefronts to get entrepreneurs the help they need to work through their problems and to keep the business moving forward. This is something I dreamed of having when building my own companies over the last 20 years. I've dreamed of having this, guys, and, I'm, and I've built it for you, and we're improving it every day for you so that you as startups have what I never had and what I always needed and what I wanted and what I had to just go pull out of other people and it was the biggest pain in the world. You're an ASF member, which means you get marketing and business consulting for life, you guys, for life. It, realize what that means. You have experts at your disposal right now. Realize how amazing this is and how much this normally costs. Use it. The only way you are sure to, to lose Sure to not get your money's worth is if you don't use it. Don't be the person who gives up and goes dark when in reality, your business is just stuck on something. There's, you're, you're usually stuck on one thing, guys. And if you, can, if you can verbalize what's going on and we can help you, we will help you. We want to help you, right? So I really want you guys to use it. I'm sure you guys can see the passion in my voice. I, it, it pains me to think of anybody out there that is stuck, that is totally stuck somewhere. And doesn't know what to do and, and doesn't know what the next move is. And so you got, we got to get you help. So ASF's history in a nutshell here. So we set out to build phenomenal art selling websites, but we discovered that photographers and artists are just a huge group of struggling entrepreneurs that need help. And so fixing broken or struggling art startups is actually the real problem. Guys, you don't have a website problem. 
you don't have a problem with any tool that you're using, right? You've got, a, you've got marketing and business problems. That's it. That is the whole thing. The reason that you are not, that, that you don't have traction, the reason that you're not getting to the next level that you want to get to is because you have business problems and those business problems have to get worked through. So we put together some key resources for, resources for you um, for uh, after this. I want you guys, if you haven't already, to make sure you've read the ASF member handbook. We recently created this a few weeks ago for all members. Um, and the purpose is to help, you know, explain everything and to make sure that you are thinking about your business and what you should be doing the right way. Um, I want you all to watch my presentation on the number one metric for art businesses. Uh, we've, we've, we've put together a list of ways to generate qualified leads, a master list, which is awesome. So you're, some of you are probably thinking, yeah, but how do I generate more qualified leads? Obviously I talked about some of those ways, but we've put together a list and we, we are building upon it every single day right now. And it's, we're going to continue to just compile this awesome master list for ASF members based on what you guys have told us, what we've learned ourselves, so that it's just one big collaboration of what's been working for everybody. And again, you just got to pick and choose off that list. Just try different things and hopefully something is going to work for you. When you do anything in person, follow the Art Show Playbook. We will link that in as well. Um, and you can apply the lead capture principles there to everything that you do in person. Listen to our customer calls. This is a new thing that we started doing, specifically the ones with Ron, Judith, and Julie. Um, I think these will resonate with you guys because Patrick and I were advising them on uh, how to think about their business as a startup and what their next moves were. And whenever you get stuck, ask questions and get help in small wins, guys. That's where it begins. It's not a social community. This is the venue we have created that makes it easy for us to help you work on your business. And I say this to any of you that are out there that are like, I do not want to be on Facebook. I will tell you guys this, I don't wanna be on Facebook either. You probably realize I'm not using a personal Facebook account. I do not use Facebook whatsoever for my personal life or my family or anything. It is a venue just to, to operate, you know, the small wins uh, group for this business. So for those of you who don't wanna be on Facebook, awesome, you just use it as a tool as well, the same way that I am, so that you can get all the value from this. Also, we're gonna have this startup workshop, as I mentioned at the beginning, probably once a month, maybe more frequently. Um, and, uh, and instead of having uh, a lot of presentations like this, it's gonna be a lot more discussion with you guys directly. I wanna talk to you, we wanna talk to you. So if your business is stuck or stalled, as you start working on these things and you need help, that means you should attend, okay? Um, stay tuned, the schedule will be released soon. Thank you. <laughs>